Well, now that we've gone through a number of different situations using the budget constraints and the indifference curves, um, there's one last sort of application that I want to take a look at using this particular tool. And that is to try to identify the impact of a price change on a consumption decision. Now, we typically understand that as the price goes in one direction, the quantity demanded goes in another direction. And that's, of course, the law of demand, and we're pretty familiar with that. But there are two countervailing forces at work when that price changes. One of them is called the substitution effect, and one of them is called the income effect. There are two different approaches to looking at the substitution effect. The first is called the Slutsky equation, and the second one is known as the Hicksian, or the Hicks equation. Each one of these is going to lead us to basically the same outcome, and that is that as far as the substitution effect is concerned, the substitution effect will always be moving in an opposite direction of a change in price. The income effect depends on the kind of good we're looking at, but the substitution effect will always move in the same direction. And so we can use the Slutsky equation, or we can use the Hicksian equation, and usually end up with the same answer, especially if they're relatively small changes in price. So let's take a look at what this, is all, what this all means, what the Slutsky approach is, and what the Hicksian approach is. They vary just minorly in their details. So let's first of all take a look at the Slutsky approach. In this case, we're just going to start off with a normal setup where we have our two goods, we have a budget constraint, and we have an indifference curve. And where those two lines are tangent, that is our optimality. Now, if there is a change in price of good, we'll say good X1, if the price of X1 goes down, and this is a normal good or a, a, a um, just a regular good, we have that shift out, we should see an increase in the amount of X1 that gets consumed, and so we shall, as we draw on our indifference curve, right here. So great, we see an increase in X1, we're dealing with just sort of our, our normal, regular looking good. The question that Slutsky and Hicks want to address is, what part of this change can be attributed to a change in your income? Now you might say, wait a second, my income isn't changing. The budget constraint hasn't really shifted because my income goes up. It's shifted because the price has changed. That's right. What we're talking about with the income effect is your relative income. So part of this change is due to an income effect. Another part of the change is due to a substitution effect where you substitute the now relatively cheaper good X1 for consumption of X2. So if we break this change down into those two component parts, then what we end up with is a better understanding of what's sort of driving this consumer choice. So how do we do that? Well, the Slutsky approach, which is the one we're looking at here, is going to introduce a third indifference curve. It's going to introduce sort of a, another uh, indifference curve to the equation. And, and in order to better understand what's going on here, let's kind of, let's blow this up a little bit. Let's uh, make it a little bit clearer so we can see exactly what's going on in the scheme of things here. So here we go. We're going to start off with our graph it's going to look like this. And here's our initial budget constraint and our initial indifference curve. And here's where the two are tangent. Okay, now we get this shift out as a result of the change of price. And we have something that looks mm, kind of like this. And here's our new budget constraint and our new indifference curve. Okay. Now the Slutsky approach says that there's going to be some stuff going on here. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to draw a new budget constraint in there. <clears throat> you could consider it to be a phantom budget constraint. A budget constraint that doesn't really exist, um, but it's going to go through this initial point. 
It's going to be parallel to the new budget constraint, but it's going to go through our initial optimality point. So this dashed black line, that's our phantom budget constraint. And if we draw in a phantom indifference curve tangent to that phantom budget constraint, we're going to get something that looks kind of like this. And so that tangency and this tangency allow us to determine what part of this change is income effect and what part is substitution effect. Well, the part that substitution effect occurs when we shift from our initial budget constraint to our phantom budget constraint. So basically this part right here. This is our sub or our substitution effect. The amount of the change from the red or from the black x1 to the red x1, this part is the substitution effect. The remaining portion, when we have this now phantom budget constraint and we shift up to the real budget constraint, that's our income effect. And if you add those two things together, you get the total impact of the change. The substitution effect you'll notice here occurs where we increase x1 as the price of x1 goes down. That's always going to be the case. The income effect could be, in this case, as you increase, sorry, as you decrease the price of x1, you, uh, you consume more. That's not always going to be the case. Sometimes you could, uh, if it's an inferior good, for example, you will have um, a change backwards in x1, sort of a, uh, as the price goes down, you buy less of it. But in this case, if the price goes down, you buy more of the good, that's your income effect, and here's your substitution effect. So the substitution effect, again, for the Slutsky equation occurs when you shift from your original budget constraint to the phantom, then the income effect occurs when you shift from the phantom to the real new budget constraint. That's the Slutsky approach. The Hicks approach is a, going to give you basically the same outcome, but just from a little bit different perspective. The Hicksian substitution effect looks more like this. Here we have our initial budget constraint and our initial indifference curve. And again, here's our original optim optimality. Now we have the change in price of good x1, and we have our new indifference curve and our new optimality right here. We say, okay, what part of this change is substitution effect and which part is income effect? So here's how we do this. We're going to once again have a phantom budget constraint, but this time the phantom budget constraint is going to be parallel to the new budget constraint, but it's going to just find a tangency with the original indifference curve. In other words, you're going to stay on the same indifference curve. Now, why do I emphasize this staying on the same indifference curve? Well, because by staying on the same indifference curve with this phantom budget constraint, we arrive at our substitution effect. You stay, you stay on the same indifference curve, the one you started with. Have that phantom budget constraint just touch that same indifference curve to get your substitution effect, and then what's left is the income effect. Again, the Slutsky approach and the Hicksian approach give you the same outcome, and almost identically the same outcome if the price changes are relatively small, but they look at it from two different perspectives. Which one you choose is really up to you. Whichever one you feel more comfortable with is, is fine, um, unless the problem is uh, very specific uh, in whether or not the Slutsky approach or the Hicksian approach will be, better, uh, be a better tool. Each one of these approaches will usually give you the same answer. They're just two different approaches, two different sides of the coin, if you will, to solving what part of the price change is attributable to the substitution effect and which is attributable to the income effect.